All right, this is um, Matthew 24 and 6. It says, ye, and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right. So, okay. All right. So, hey, you know, the Lord was telling them, hey, the end is not yet. And what's the end? What were we supposed to look for? What's that, second heaven six? Esau? Oh, so that wasn't the end. And the mystery of iniquity, he said, already do exist. And they haven't received their judgment yet. So he, the Lord knew there was a lot of things that still had to happen because the Father revealed it to him. He said, he was saying, yo, the end is not yet. You know, when you hear wars and rumors of wars, this is just the beginning of the end. And you're going to see earthquakes in diverse places. All these things, man. Nations shall rise against nation. Yeah, nations shall rise against nation. All right, and that's happening in these times. All right, all right, cool. You try to say it happened in 70 AD? Yes. All right, watch this though. Yahweh shall still didn't return after that. After he died, and he came back, and he left, and these prophecies played out in 70 AD. Yahweh shall didn't show up with a band of angels yet. Esau still in rulership. The white man is still wickedness everywhere. So that means that, that wicked kingdom that was ruling back then, during the times of Greece and Rome, that kingdom is still on this earth somewhere. Oh, maybe we in it. All right? And who, those people are still ruling, the devil. The earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. So that's Esau, the so-called white man. All right, these prophecies had to play out too. You know, and that's when we know we're in the end. Uh, the end of the world. This is Second Ezra chapter six. I'm gonna start at verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Uh, come on, Boston. Verse seven. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first? Right, so he was asking, you know, Ezra was asking, when is going to be the end of, the, of these, these, these systems? And this was way back, um, what, Babylon? Oh, uh, no, uh, 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 480 uh, BC with Xerxes. Yeah, Art of Xerxes. All right, go ahead. It says, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of, of it that follow? Right, man. So he saw this all the way back then. And he's talking about Esau. <laughs> Go ahead. And then even in Lamentations, Jeremiah spoke about it. He said Esau was going to be judged. All right? Anybody want to get it, you know what I mean? Um, if not, I get it. Go ahead. It says, verse 8, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, And when Jacob and Esau was born of him, Jacob had... Uh, held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, the king that's finna come. Alright, that, that, that the Lord is going to um, establish with the, uh, with the elect. But Esau, we're in, in um, Esau kingdom age right now, man. Alright, which is this age is finna fall. Alright, this age is finna soon come to pass, man. All right, and and and, and Ezra, saw, Ezra saw, was told this by the angel of Uriel. All right, so so this age has been a crumble, man. All right, this is Acts chapter one verse five. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom? Uh, again, the kingdom of Israel to Israel, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. That's right, man. It's, it's clear, man. It, it was, the Lord was trying to put it out there to everybody like, Yo, stop thinking the tabernacle of David is going to be built now. Yeah, we're going to build the foundation of faith now. We're going to start with Peter, who is King David himself. Right, we're going to start with that. All right? Go ahead. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the earth. The othermost parts of the earth. So they're already teaching in Jerusalem and Samaria and all these places. He said, they're going down to the way of Samaritans, right? But now he said, what? To the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's twofold. It happened then. And it's, going to ha it's happening now with the uh, outermost parts of the earth. It says, right. when he has spoken these things, Real quick. the 
uttermost parts of the earth. All right, because we were scattered around the four corners of the earth, and that's where the Gentiles, the Israelites, have to be reached. And how are they going to be reached? It's through the internet, which is called a unicorn, uh, around the four corners of the earth, where we were scattered. All right, uh, go ahead, brother. It says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and, and a cloud received them out of their sight. Right. And after Yahweh Shah went on the right hand of the Father, his spirit is able to reach all over the earth now. All right. So all these prophecies had to come into play. You know, and Paul, Paul and Peter, they couldn't go all over the world, man. Huh. All right. So they had to set it up for a future kingdom, a future uh, age in which we were taken into. And set up, and set up, and, and swiftly taken into on slave ships, and set up for our salvation or judgment unto death, which is called Babylon, America. You know, so that's talking about now. All right, go ahead, brother. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, beheld two men stood by them in white apparel, yep. which also said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing upon the heavens?" This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from from you unto heaven, shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go unto heaven. That's right, man. So we that's what we're looking for, the return of Yahweh Shai. And we ain't going to get it, but if you were reading Ezra, 2 Ezra chapter 9, or 13, it says that when he returns, he's going to return on a big chariot. The same cloud that took him up. And he's going to return that same way over in the Middle East with thousands, billions, millions of angels all over the world. Kind. Yeah. Kind of. This is Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. It says, right here, it says, Behold, he come with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall walk because of him, even so are mine. That's right, and that hasn't happened yet, man. So how the tabernacle of David is not going to be fully established until then. We've been establishing our heart and mind and spirit in, in the faith of his son, Yahweh Shai, of Yahweh's son, Yahweh Shai. So, so we're a reflection of that foundation that was set up 2,000 years, two or 3,000 years ago. All right, so that was the beginning of the temple being built. Because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. All right? So once we get set up uh, physically, that's now. All right. This is uh, First Peter uh, chapter one verse thirteen. Yep. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the re revelation of Yahweh Shai. Right, man. When, when Yahweh Shai is revealed, man, in these days, and, and being revealed to us through the Spirit as well. All right, and that's now. It's, it's being built up spiritually and then physically. That simple, simple man. I got three more verses. All right, so when Pastor Tahar saying James went off, yeah, he, he did go off, but for what reason? You know, he did. You know, he's wanted to quote, he wanted to calm down these Jews and Gentiles, which are Israelites, that were about to go to war. And he wanted to kill the confusion about the law of circumcision. was not talking about 50 A.D. Amos 9 and 8 was referring to 2018, circa. <laughs> Possibly. God. Hopefully. Hey, and also what? He was in the spirit that we're supposed to be in. James was hastening the day. Mm -hmm. He wanted the kingdom now at that time. Uh, yeah, I got, I got peace, yeah, he wanted it then. Okay. Yeah, let's bring these out, then we wrap it up. This is, uh... This is 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 13. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is ready. It says already prepared for you. Watch. So the kingdom already is prepared for us and we're supposed to be watching, man. So like the, uh, like Saquon just said, all right, James was hastening in the day. Just like in these times, all right, the men of the Lord are still hastening in the day. Starting with all the way down. We're still hastening and we're still praying for shorter days that the kingdom can hurry up and be established, man. Right, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful.
Yeah, another one through there. I was going to finish. Yeah, let's do this one. And then this one. Oh, that one is in the... Yeah, he just said he's going to... Yeah, good. Alright. This is all second edit. Yeah, second edit. Second edit. Chapter 4, verse 33. Then I answered and said, How and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are years are like Wherefore are our years few and evil? And he wow. answered and wow. he answered me, saying, Do not thou hasten above the most high. Yeah. For thy haste is in vain to be above him. For thou hast much exceeded, did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things yeah. in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on his on this fashion? Wow. When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? Right, man, go ahead. And unto these things Uriel the archangel gave them their answer, and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. Right. By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times. That's right, and that goes with Daniel 9 to 24. He actually put a calculated number to it. And we ain't gonna go into it. You know, that'd be a whole nother breakdown. But Daniel 9 and 24 calculates the Messiah showing up and then uh, uh, being uh, killed. All right, from 66 AD all the way up to 74 AD. You know? With the, uh, uh, until we ran into Masada. But in the midst of that, around 70 AD, the temple was going to be destroyed. But before that, the anointed was going to be killed. And the anointed represent Yahweh Shai and the disciples. Go ahead. And he doth not move nor stir them until yep. the sad measure be fulfilled. Oh, he's not going to disturb or move anything until, until everything he prophesied from the beginning and measured. Uh, second Ezra is uh, nine. Once again, let me get. Uh, we can. Matter of fact, yeah, man. Yep. Let's get it. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse one. Right. How did he number everything with his prophecies, man? Chronicled it, right? Recorded it. You know. Go ahead. He answered me then and said, Measure thou time diligently and itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. That's just clear, man. Alright, so he said he what? He says, By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times. Right, through what? Prophecy. Go ahead. And he doth not move nor stir them until the sad measure be fulfilled. What is that? He said what? The same yesterday, the same as today. And that's why Esau, that wild uh, grass that the Lord didn't cut down yet. You know? Go ahead, brother. And on top of that, that's how you know he measured by prophecy, because that's why he said, my words will not return to me void. So right. those things have to happen in, for, in order for the next step to take to occur, man. Can you get lamentation? No, never know. Yep. Alright, this is the book of Lamentations. Right, this one let you know we're in the end. This is when we're going to be established according to Amos 9 and 8. And we're going to finish with Amos 9 and 8 too. Go ahead. Alright, this is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 21. Yep. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, yep. that dwelleth in the land of Uz. Uh -huh. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. And this was a prophecy given from Jeremiah. After we fell to Babylon, and Edom was sent in there to burn down our town. Uh -huh. yeah, Edom was sent in there to burn down our temple. This message is going to come out. Edom was sent in there to burn down this temple. You know, burn down our temple. And these are the Edomites. In 586 B.C. Huh. So, so what is that? Jeremiah was pissed off saying, hey... Esau, y'all mocking us and laughing at us, and they said they laughed at our Sabbath. See, we were going through hell. We had no comfort, as the brother read earlier. And Edom was laughing at us and mocking us. So Jeremiah said, yo, you're going to be the curse in the end. The Lord going to bring judgment upon all y'all heathens, and he did that. He judged all them nations with uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But he didn't bring an end to Esau yet. He didn't inflame Esau and give them the whole world yet to bring him down. Go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, Alright, I'm gonna start from the top. Oh, of go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's quick. Let's quick. Alright, this is Psalms uh, chapter 137, verse 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom. So the Lord said to 
Uh, 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 well, who's it? King David? Whoever that is praying, <laughs> saying, hey, go ahead, brother. All right, this is Psalms 137, That's right. verse 7. Yeah. Remember, O Lord, Yahweh, the children of Edom in the days of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. All right, man. O daughter, o daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that take and dash our little ones against the stone. Right, the Lord gonna raise up his elect. And they gonna what? He gonna raise up the tabernacle of David. And they gonna take the, their little ones and dash them against the stone. You see that? He said, these people said, raise it, bring it down, tear it down, uh, never said never. And then in 70 AD, they followed right behind that spirit and burned that shit down again. And the Lord used them to strike the rock. Uh -huh. But the Lord said, what? Can't you see it's hard to kick against the prick? You strike your sword against that rock, your sword get broken. Uh -huh. Which is your blessing. All right? Go ahead, brother. Give All me right. a precept. This is back in the book of Lamentations. Right, so that was the proof that they came and burned our temple down. But the Lord said, there's a judgment coming against them for that. All right? He said, remember them. I bet you're going to get angry. That's why yeah. I like funny a little bit. Damn, it's weird. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 21 again. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Right, they haven't been, they haven't been put in slavery yet uh, 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 since David okay. had them in bondage. They haven't been put in car court slavery yet. We haven't been kicking their damn children up the goddamn street like little ass Nerf balls and shit yet. <laughs> we haven't done this yet. We haven't taken them and put them. The Lord ain't put their neck into our hands yet. I got it. Go ahead. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. O daughter, O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. No more. And that's after as he spoke of in 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and 7 where he says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning that follows and that's when you get to Amos 9 and 8 the reestablishment of the tabernacle of King David alright that's a temple that's built up on the spirit of on truth and until the truth is, is set in place there will be no temple alright at that time they were set uh, James John James Peter Barnabas and Paul, we're establishing the foundation. Uh, go ahead, brother. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He's going to visit their, their iniquity, everything they've done to us in the past. Let's see that one? Let's go ahead and get this one from uh, Five Minutes of Fame. Yeah. So everything y'all did to our women, we're going to do that to y'all. The chains, we're going to have better chains than y'all, too. Uh, <laughs> right? Heavy. Heavier. All right, go ahead. He will discover thy sin. He gonna discover your sins, man. Why he gonna he gonna have these other nations nations discover your skirts? So we're in that time. Go ahead, brother. All right, this is First Ezra, chapter two, verse forty-five. No, chapter three. Yeah, got it. Four. It says, thus also has void. It says has void to build up the temple. Which the Edomites burnt when Judea was made desolate by the 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 Chaldees. Yep, the Chaldees. The Chaldees. Right, the Chaldees represent the Babylonians, northern and southern Mesopotamia or Babylon. All right, modern day Iraq. Uh, now the Chaldeans would be who? Nebuchadnezzar. Hmm. All right, and that happened in 586 BC. Now um, Esau burned it down, man. They burn that shit down. So until you see them get their payment back for that, the tabernacle of David is not going to be risen. You know, once you see us whipping, whipping their ass and putting them in bondage for a thousand years, you know, that's when the tabernacle of David is going to be fully established. Oh, go ahead, brother. I got one. I don't got real late. Who got a precept? Uh, Sean. Um, no, no, you got found one, but who already has it? Uh, Amos. Yeah.
Alright, bring that up. Amos 9 and 8. Come. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. God said, so the Lord said he's going to destroy America off the face of the earth because America is that sinful kingdom, man. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the Lord's not going to utterly destroy the house of Jacob because all Israel is going to be saved, but two thirds on this side that's going to be joined hand in hand with the wicked, they're going to be destroyed. Right, but the elect is going to be saved out of, out of, out of um, these times. Keep going, Brother the show. Verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among the nations. Yeah, power, Brother the show. Like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the beast grain fall upon the earth. So right now the Lord is doing sift. He's sifting right now. All right, he's sifting the, the elect amongst the heathens. All right, because why? Because why? Our, our people are scattered all over around the four corners of the earth, man. All right? And they were scattered amongst these heathens. So the Lord is sifting right now. Keep going with the book, sir. Verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. God, so all the sinners of our people is going to die by the sword. All right? The ones that want to be, uh, uh, want to take, uh, 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 on these heathens' customs, man. All right, keep going. The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. All right, keep going. Verse 11. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. God, so the Lord said he's going to raise up the tabernacle of David which is fallen. All right? So the Lord is raising up the tabernacle of David in these times, man. Right, right. All right? That, 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 uh, that, um, that lively, the, the, uh, the elect, all right? That's, um... Um, send up a um, uh, spiritual sacrifice unto the Lord that is, what, what, that is acceptable unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, that's turning back to the Lord full heartedly. All right, not waving and being tossed by every wind of doctrine, how two thirds of our people are. All right, being uh, spiritually sick and blind. And close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it as in the days of old. So the Lord is doing that amongst you people's eyes right now, man. All right, amongst you, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, he's doing that amongst you Israelites. He's heathens. He's raising it up. All right, he's building it back up, man. All right, because at, at, that, um, at that time, uh, back in um, Acts, the Lord was, was establishing it. But in these times, it's being built up. All right, by spiritual, by uh, having faith in y'all, watching y'all shot, turn it back. I don't know what you mean. Stop that. <laughs> I'm good now. Come. You already, you, you read Amos 9, you broke it down beautiful. That was Amos 9 and 8, right? Come. You gotta go through that. Um, Revelations, um, 11 and 14, somebody? Yep. Somebody get 11 and 1 and you get 11 I and 14. Got 11 and 14. All right. Bring out 11 and 1 first. All right. Revelations chapter 11, verse 1. Yep. There was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Yahweh, and the altar, and them that worship therein. That's everything the brother just said, man. And we're supposed to measure the temple, meaning the Israelites. Measure them according to the scriptures, right? And prepare to build the temple, meaning edifying through the church, through the word. Go ahead. Verse 2. Yep, that's happening in these times, and that's what they were doing back then, building through, through, through the spirit. But this is an establishment in these times of the spirit and then going into the physical establishment. Go ahead. Verse 2. But the court which is without the temple leave out. Right. Leave them heathens out, man. Don't go after them. If they can't get it, they can't get it. Cast not your pearl before swine. Go ahead. And measure it not, for it is given not unto the... Like it. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under forty-four and two months. Right, so it's given unto the Gentiles. Outside is the, the world, the wicked, the darkness, the death, the sin. That's given to y'all, vocab. Okay. All right, that's it. Go to 14, 13. Yeah, 14. Actually, down to 11. 11. Yep. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them. Hey. That happened now. Go ahead. It didn't happen. John the Revelator speaking, right? And after that, the disciples wasn't on the scene. No, that had to happen in the future. That happened right in front of your goddamn face right now. Go ahead. Unto them, they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right. That's the, that's the reestablishment of the tabernacle of David. Go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. 
and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. The beast.